Coiner with less hassle. Yes, you can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world with our safe, secure, fast and convenient service that offers you the largest selection of payout locations in the Gambia. Supersonics Money Transfer we are currently in 34 African countries and counting, giving you quality money remittance services that are second to none. Visit Penmore Physiotherapy and Rehabilitation Clinic is the first of its kind in the Ghana. We have inpatient service. and outpatient services. Penmore admits patients and they have intensive rehabilitations. That means treatment three times a day for five days from Mondays to Friday and on Fridays they go to their families to spend time with them to have family. Our patients come on regular appointments probably twice or three times in a week for treatment. We treat patients with arthritis, with back pain, stroke patients, fractures or after fracture operation, paralysis of all types and we do treat both young and old patients. more Physiotherapy gives quality physiotherapy treatments to Gambians because we are qualified physios from different parts of the world. If you want to receive monies from UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world, Supersonics Money Transfer has got you covered. With the largest payout network in the Gambia, you can now receive your monies anywhere you are from Kartong to Koina with less hassle. Yes! You can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world with our safe, secure, fast and convenient service that offers you the largest selection of payout locations in the Gambia. Supersonics Money Transfer we are currently in 34 African countries and counting, giving you quality money remittance services that are second to none. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Penmore Physiotherapy and Rehabilitation Clinic is the first of its kind in the Ghana. We have inpatient service. and outpatient services. Penmore admits patients and they have intensive rehabilitations. That means treatment three times a day for five days from Mondays to Friday and on Fridays they go to their families to spend time with them to have family. Our patients come on regular appointments probably twice or three times in a week for treatment. We treat patients with arthritis, with back pain, stroke patients, fractures or after fracture operation, paralysis of all types and we do treat both young and old patients. Penmore Physiotherapy gives quality physiotherapy treatments to Gambians because we are qualified physios from different parts of the world. If you want to receive monies from UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world, Supersonics Money Transfer has got you covered. With the largest payout network in the Gambia, you can now receive your monies anywhere you are from Kartong to Koina with less hassle. Yes! You can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada. Basically, the purpose of this uh, press conference is to uh, enable the Honorable Minister of Health, uh, as the leader of uh, the Ministry of Health, to give you an update, to give the masses an update uh, as to the operations and the happening uh, of the time as far as the COVID-19 and all other issues surrounding the Ministry of Health have concerned. So today, uh, you will have an opportunity to get an update, detailed update from the Honorable Minister regarding a variety of aspects and issues surrounding the Ministry of Health. So on that note, we just want to now, uh, you know, probably invite uh, Moni Jai uh, to moderate uh, this session uh, uh, and then uh, before the other minister uh, comes in. Sure. 
Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I was first of all, I want to recognize uh, the presence of the Honorable Minister of Health, Honorable Minister of Health, uh, PS1, Honorable Minister of Health, PS2, Slotted so in, we not yet. Okay. <coughs> so, on that note, uh, after recognizing the presence of all of you, we want to thank you for the time. You are taking out of your busy schedule to be with us today. So, I know, Minister, you can uh, give your statement. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Njai. As uh, mentioned, uh, we're here to give you an update uh, of uh, some of the activities being carried out by the Minister of Health and uh, some of the recent uh, updates on the events that are uh, uh, unfolding. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you very much for coming to cover this press conference where important issues in the health sector will be highlighted. We are aware of the allowance issues of the nurses being discussed by the Nurses and Midwives Association and the threat to go on strike on the 1st of September 2021. This is an unfortunate call and is a step that health workers should always refrain from. I will start by giving you the background to the allowance issue. It is important that you all know that this government is very committed to the provision of high quality health care for the people of this country. In that vein, this government raised the salaries of all civil servants by 50% and the transport allowance from $500 to $1,500. This equally benefited the nurses. Within one year of coming into office, the government increased the night allowances of nurses at Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital by 100% and in some cases 200%. Various nurses had increased allowances in the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. President Barrow's government had ever since wanted to improve the take-home pay of the nurses and other healthcare workers in this country. At the level of the Minister of, Minister of Health, we started engaging various parties in this line, and unfortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, we got very good support, as it is one of our, of our strategies to improve the quality of services and reduce mortality and morbidity in our health facilities. The allowance adjustments were reviewed and categorized and were to be in, they were to be implemented in phases. This process started. During that period, we received a courtesy call from some executive committee members of the Nurses and Midwives Association. One of the main items put forward by the association was the allowance issue for the in-charge nurses, that's the in-charge nurses allowance, and for on-call allowance for the OICs, that's officers in charge. The ministry immediately asked them to provide a proposal. This proposal was brought, but only the OICs were going to benefit, that is the officers in charge. At that point, we told them that it should be comprehensive to include all other staff 
since the other nursing staff also need to be motivated. The executive committee members went back to review their proposal, which was being awaited by us. During that period, the cabinet approved an allowance structure, which was earlier approved by the National Assembly for a few PhD holders and medical doctors who, who are moved from the hospitals to the central level to make their take-home pay close to what their counterparts receive in the hospitals. These PhD holders include nurses, public health officers, and laboratory scientists. The allowance structure was based on what another ministry is benefiting from. This, however, raised a lot of negative sentiments, and I requested for those allowances to be put off, and no one has ever been paid those allowances. Even though we were working, even though those allowances were put off, but we were working on the allowances for the nurses. The executive committee rallied nurses and threatened the strike sometime in June 2021. Government contacted them, and discussions were held, headed by the Secretary General uh, and head of the civil service. Allowance suggestions were made, and an agreement was made to pay the allowances at the end of August 2021. Work had since begun between the Secretary General's office, Ministry of Health, Personnel Management Office, and Ministry of Finance, to be able to pay at the end of August 2021. The finalized document had to go back to cabinet for final approval, which happened on the 26th August 2021. These very important steps take time, and that made it difficult to put it, to put it on the payroll for August 2021, because the inputting into the payroll is closed by the 5th of any particular month. This was communicated to the Executive Committee of the Nurses and Midwives Association, who were reassured that payment will now be made at the end of September, and it will be backdated to August 2021. Unfortunately, before this communication, there were already threats of a strike by some nurses, and even after hearing this information, the threats of strike continued. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this government is very committed to the welfare of all Gambians, especially by providing good quality health services for our people. In the same vein, government is very committed to the provision of a well-trained, well-motivated, and high-performing health workforce. This is the reason why government is always going out of its way to provide the needs of the healthcare providers. I wish to remind all the nurses and other healthcare workers that we all chose this field of work for one reason, and that is to provide services to the sick and needy. I'm sure we all remember one of the favorite questions of the interview panel before we gained admissions into various health institutions is, why do you want to be a nurse, a doctor, a public health officer, laboratory scientist, pharmacist, physiotherapist, and so on. The answer most of us gave was to save lives. How come we are talking about striking when we know that that could lead to the loss of valuable, irreplaceable lives and suffering of our people? If the nurses strike, who may, who may need the services of those nurses? Do you know? It, it, It could be any of us or anybody in this country. Does that not defeat our being some of the most compassionate people? It goes without saying that nothing, including money, conditions of service, personalities, politics, etc., should ever come between you and your patients. Who is going to deliver that patient you provided antenatal care for? Who is going to give those patients that you admitted medications? Unfortunately, we have gotten information that politics is gradually infiltrating into our health services. Some politicians are instigating some people into going on strike in trying to make the health services a political football field. 
This should be condemned in all forms as disease, sickness, accidents, injuries, no, no boundaries. We therefore need a functional system for whoever might need the services. We also want to remind our dear nurses that they are all civil servants and the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Health staff first and foremost before being a member of the Nurses and Midwife Association, which is voluntary. They have a contractual obligation to the government. No civil servant is given a job without applying for it. And on appointment, an employee is given an appointment letter which stipulates the basic salary and all allowances. It certainly is ironical that after a while, people come and say they must be, the allowances must be mandatorily increased. Even with that, President Barrow's government is very accommodating, very supportive, and has ac agreed to your request to support the health service delivery. This should be appreciated. We, however, want to remind everyone that our work is guided by the General Orders, Public Service Commission Regulations, Code of Conduct for the Civil Service, and the Personal Procedures Manual for the Gambia Civil Service. This has made it very clear what a civil servant can do and what he cannot do. Under these rules, strike is illegal. What an aggrieved person can do is to resign with one month notice or immediately by paying one month salary to government in lieu of notice. We have also condemned the misguided utterances by some of the executive members of the nurses, Nursing and Midwives Association, especially the public relations officer. We have come across communication from him on the social media where he put disrespectful statements on His Excellency the President, myself as Health Minister, and my team. We condemn his behavior and warn him that that behavior will not be tolerated. He even went ahead to tag an opposition element which goes to point his motives. We have also realized that he is also fond of giving misinformation with regards to the Gambia's health sector as being the worst in Africa. This statement is certainly not true, and we wish to inform him that he does not have the competence to make such statements as he lacks the experience and exposure to make those statements. Health sector performance is based on certain indicators, and below are the position of Gambia and some of those indicators. One, maternal mortality ratio. The Gambia stands at the 11th best position in Africa. Two, under five mortality. The Gambia stands at the 19th best position in Africa. Three, COVID-19 response. The Gambia stands at the 15th best position in Africa. Four, immunization coverage. Gambia has achieved 90% immunization coverage and one of the best in the region. When you go to reduction of malaria, the prevalence has been reduced from 30% in 2004 to 0.5% as we speak, 0.1% as we speak currently. This statement by the PRO certainly is not true. It is grossly guided misinformation. And we want to remind all and sundry that anyone can belong to any political party, but this not, must not interfere with their work, especially patient care. 
We have had unfortunate instances where patients are told to go and buy items like gloves or even being referred to other facilities simply because some elements are holding these essential items to sabotage government's efforts in trying to give government a bad name. We have also seen some people leaving wards and patients' environment dirty and in inconducive environments, patients are left in such environments because they are trying to sabotage government. We condemn these acts and they will not be tolerated. We also want to emphasize that there is what we call the results-based financing. This is a support system that is funded by the Gambia government and the World Bank. For this system, health facilities are scored based on performance. They are then paid an amount based on a score. Out of this amount, 60% is supposed to be spent on the health facility to buy drugs, renovation, and all the other items that are needed. And 40% is shared amongst the staff of the health facility as a bonus. I'm surprised that any time the executive of the Nurses and Midwives Association talk about allowances they need, they do not mention that they receive the RBF bonus. This is quite a lot of money, and some facilities receive hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars that is shared among the health workers in that particular facility as a bonus. That is different from the salary and all the other allowances that they've been receiving. And this RBF scheme has been expanded by government to all health facilities in this country. At this juncture, it is also important to note that the government of the Gambia has paid over $110 million as COVID-19 allowance to the health workers, and most of this went to the nurses, and more allowances are being prepared to, the pay, to be paid. These all go to say the amounts of resources government is putting so that uh, people get motivated and they continue to work hard. At this juncture, I would like to give you some of the very impactful activities that President Barrow's government is carrying out in the health sector since its inception. One, SF Health Center is being renovated and expanded. The theater is now functional, and cesarean sections are carried out there to save the lives of pregnant women. Two, a new maternity block has been built in Jiao Health Center to alleviate their perennial challenge in the care of the pregnant woman. Three, government is setting up a new hemodialysis center in Bansang Hospital to alleviate the suffering of the people coming for dialysis services. This building is now ready for use. Four, the health facility in Woodley Kerewan was expanded and new, and, new, and new structures have been built to make access to services for the people easy. Five, government has built five new RCH centers, that's the Productive and Child Health Centers, which will also function as health posts in Brikama Nyambai, Brikama Wellingara, Makumbaya, Busumbala, and Fonyi Tampoto. These are awaiting inauguration. Construction work will begin for another, another 11 of these types of facilities, one in Bulangati, two Medina Sanja, three Medina Angale, four Buduk, five Talinding, six Bakau, seven Nyangen, eight Timbinkoto, nine Medina Modum, 
10 Gisadi and 11 Balangar Jaloto. Point number six, government is constructing six new health centers in Jau, Kisima Jau, Mankamankunda, Jali, Sarajulde, and Salikenya. The president will do the foundation lane ceremonies during his tour for this construction of these facilities. Seven, we are happy to inform you that the construction work of a new teaching hospital will soon start at Farato. This will start in phases, with the initial phase being a 100-bed emergency treatment center, new public health laboratory, blood transfusion center, and conference center. The bids have been opened and been evaluated. State of, a state-of-the-art $37 million medical waste management centers, two of them, are being constructed, one in Faratu, and the second at the Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. The equipment for these sites are already in country and are awaiting installation. Point number eight, <coughs> the tender for the renovation of Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital and the Banjul Polyclinic have been opened and been evaluated. Renovation work in these health facilities will start in September 2021, that's next month. Point nine, numerous health facilities have been renovated and expanded. Under that, Kuntea Health Center will have overall renovation and expansion starting next week. Brikama Bar and Serekunda Health Centers are undergoing expansion works. Brikama Bar, Base, Brikama Health Center, and Buyam General Hospital, with the support from the World Bank, all have been assessed and work will soon start. The tender, tenders are currently being advertised on the newspapers for the expansion, renovation, and upgrading of Fajikunda Health Center, Sukuta Health Center, Nauleru, Kerado, and Daru Lirwan Health Post. E. Old Yundum Health Post, Gunjur Health Center, Brukut Health Centers have been assessed and renovation work will soon start. F, government and partners have built three temporary treatment centers in Esel, Soma, and Bansang. These are 20 bed facilities each and are ready for use. G, construction work of eight permanent treatment centers is currently ongoing in Kanuma, Njaba Kunda, Palenwasu, Yerobaul Kunda, Yerobaul, Yerobaul, Sabi, Bansang, Soma, and Kafuta. H, at, this, at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, there was no infectious disease center in the country. Government has upgraded, renovated, and modified the former Devon Clinic and renamed it as Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital Bacow Center. This facility has been very helpful because it is now our main COVID-19 treatment center. Point number I, the Ministry of Health is putting up 11 ambulance centers along the highways. This will be strategically located. They'll be at Bacow Sting Corner, Ghana Town, Mandina Bar, Kalaji, Queen Ella, Bakadaji, Sami Karantawa, Jareng, Nyangabantang, Njaba Kunda, and Ndungu Kebe. This will be manned by paramedics for rapid response to accidents. 16 health workers were sent to Turkey three days ago to train as trainers for the pre-hospital emergency care of patients. This will go a long way in reducing mortality and mobility on the highways. Work will start, inshallah, in, October, in September 2021. J, to reduce the use of toilets along the, the open use of toilets along the highways, the Ministry of Health is building 13 rest stations 
which will have toilets and a seating hall each. And this will help in maintaining the dignity of our people when they travel along the highways. These facilities will be located at Kalaji, Soma, Bikamaba, Base, Yorobal Junction, Laminkoto, Kaur, Farafenye, Brikama, Bara, Brikama Garage, Tanje Fish Landing Site, and the Banjul Ferry Terminal. Okay, the Ministry of Health has procured 80 new ambulances as we, int we introduce the community ambulance system in the community. The first batch of 20 ambulances are expected to arrive here within the next 10 days. This will go a long way in reducing the difficulties our people, especially the pregnant women, face in getting to the health facilities in time. Equipment. This government has inherited a situation whereby equipment were never bought for the health sector. Most, mostly we got used equipment that were donated to the health sector. Since coming into office, President Barrow's government and partners have, have spent over $350 million equivalent on equipment. Examples of these are ventilators, oxygen concentrators, endoscopy, endoscopy equipment, pulse oximeters, suction machines, autoclaves, patient, multi-patient par, uh, 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 parameter monitors, mobile x-ray machines, oxygen plants, ambulances, etc. Services. The scope of services in our health facilities have greatly increased. This is more so in EFSTH. Examples of services that were not possible in this country before coming into office of this government are one endoscopy, both upper and lower gastrointestinal endoscopy. Two, laparoscopic surgery, also called pinhole surgery. Three, vascular surgery. Four, joint replacement surgery. Five, colposcopy. Six, PCR testing for cervical cancer. This is just to name a few. Before the coming into office of this government, these were all not possible here, and we had to send our patients outside the borders of this country to get these services. And now we are able to do all these services in this country for the people of this country. And these have been made possible because of the equipment government has invested to buy. And also, the specialists that have been trained by government and that have been brought in from other countries to provide the essential services for the people of this country. And for this reason, it goes without saying, and that it's, it's an open secret, that Gambia receives a lot of patients from all over the sub-region. In fact, quite a lot of our facilities that are not too far away from the borders are utilized by a whole lot of people who come from other countries for the healthcare services uh, uh, in this country. Capacity enhancement. Within the last two years, the government of the Gambia has employed over 500 skilled health personnel to enhance the quality of services in our health facilities and to re reduce the burden of work on the already present health workers in the facilities. To build capacity, President Barrow's government has started training programs in public institutions for the first time in the history of this country in nurse anesthesia and midwifery to BSc level. 80 scholarships have been made available to these training programs and the courses have started. The beneficiaries of these scholarships include the PRO of the Nurses and Midwifery Association. 
The Ministry of Health is training an extra 100 community health nurses and 100 state enrolled nurses. These students are being given scholarships and are to com commence school, school work in September 2021. For the first time in the history of this country, the Ministry of Health has started residency training in the country. Currently, doctors are being trained at EFSTH in surgery, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, training in family medicine and internal medicine will start soon. All these are geared towards strengthening the health capacity gaps in our country. Currently, more and more medicines and medical supplies are being delivered to the Ministry of Health from the government procurement. All these go to show that government is very committed to the provision of quality and affordable health services to the citizenry. The health insurance bill, which is in the National Assembly, when passed, will go a long way in strengthening the health sector. Ladies and gentlemen, the health sector is a very important sector, yet still it is the most complex and most resource-intensive sector. We certainly need very committed, hard-working, dedicated people who put the lives of their patients first. The majority of the health workers in the health sector belong to this group, and we commend them sincerely for all their efforts and their dedication and commitment to the service of humanity. However, we have challenges of people not doing their work well, and we will deal with that. On a recent visit I made to a particular hospital, I made the emergency unit of the hospital not clean. We blood stains on a couch and on the wall, some fans not working and some air conditioners not working. When that of the offices were working, the offices of the staff were working. We had made it clear that that is not acceptable and would not be tolerated. That particular unit has a ward in charge. There is also a deputy departmental matron, a departmental matron, a deputy chief matron, a chief matron, and the facility, the hospital, has an administrator, deputy head of the hospital, and head of the hospital. They also have a head of maintenance and a maintenance team. It clearly shows that some people are not doing their work, and we will deal with that as a matter of urgency. Ladies and gentlemen, we wish to assure the people of this country that the Ministry of Health is doing all what it can to provide health care services that our people deserve. At this juncture, I wish to inform the general body of the nurses that their allowance increments have been paid by the central bank today, and they should check their various accounts. For those working in the seven subvented hospitals, deaths are being sent to the hospitals for payment. We urge you all to continue your work with even more vigor and dedication. We thank you all for all your hard work and dedication to duty, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. We also wish to inform all other health workers that we have started the process for the payment of equivalent allowances to, all, to them as well. This will be finalized soon. To whom much is given, much is expected. So the people of this country expect a lot from us. So let us work with all our hearts and minds to give the people of this country the health services that they deserve. We, used to use, we, want, we wish to use this opportunity to thank all the health workers who have worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic, and we're still working and struggling to make sure the people of this country get the care that they deserve. I wish to use this opportunity to thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you.
Yes, again. Good one. Fine. Okay, so I should. Yeah, uh, you can. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm one at a time. Like, we cannot ask two, two, three questions. Then I'll give you a chance to ask two questions. Yes, yeah, please. But I didn't want to overload you. Uh, yes, I just wanted to know um, what is the ministry's next step? Should the nurses um, maintain their stand about the strike to the economic? So you know that could be catastrophic to our health system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Mine is a clarification. Yesterday I saw a press release about forms already given to um, put into the accounts of nurses, some nurses, and at the end, it wasn't the case according to the Nurses Association. Just, just want to know where, where the gap is. Thank you. Another one? Now we can respond to a question read by Aisha. We can have a reaction. Your reaction will be good there. That's a reaction from the, from the association. And also about the COVID uh, testing. I think, uh, thank you very much. Uh, with regards to the rejection of the letter, I think it was unfortunate uh, because, as I uh, said in the statement, uh, because of the work that needed to be done. Uh, allowance computations are not easy, uh, they, and uh, you have to involve a lot of people. As I mentioned, Secretary General's office was involved, personnel management office that's responsible for the computation uh, of the allowances needs to be involved. 
then it gets sent to the Ministry of Finance, who then looks for the money. The money has to be looked for. These monies are usually not lying in Ministry of Finance just to be taken. They, they get funds from tax revenue collected, tax uh, and monies from other sources. So all these things have to be put together, and when they are available, allowances are paid. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, the actual inputting is usually done on the fifth of the month. If it is beyond the fifth of the month, the system is set up in such a that, the way that beyond the fifth of the month, you don't input allowances and so on. Salary preparation, uh, no inputs coming. So that would have made it late for this uh, August. That was the explanation that was sent. And uh, the suggestion was the, they complete everything. Everything has been completed. And uh, you remember I did mention that uh, it was supposed to be sent to cabinet for final approval. And that cabinet meeting took place on the 26th of August. So that was the reason. So the explanation uh, that was uh, sent to the nurses was to allow for the processes to take place in September, before the 5th of September, so that in September the allowances could be paid for September and the backdated ones for August also to be paid. And I think that's reasonable. I think that's a reasonable position. So I was very surprised that was rejected. And that, uh, to me, wasn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, was not understandable. Yeah. So, but fortunately, we've gone beyond that uh, with the support from all of various part, part, parties, uh, the Accountant General's Department, Ministry of Finance, the Central Bank. Uh, we are able to uh, get it done. Our team was able to get it done, uh, not as the salary input, but as a special payment. And that is how come they are getting it this way. Thank you. Now, the second question was uh, the issue of your grand grandfather passing away. Uh, please accept our sincere condolences. A friend's grandfather, accept our sincere condolences. Yeah, the, the, the typical thing is uh, when people have COVID-like symptoms and they die, uh, samples are still taken and tested to ascertain if they died of COVID. Uh, that helps us determine the cause of that, but it also helps us do contact tracing so that we know that the contacts need to be tested and then we can follow the contacts up uh, for any po positive test results or for development of symptoms. Uh, this has been the practice, so I'm surprised that it didn't happen under this circumstance. Now, because of this practice of testing the people who have already died. In fact, that has made our COVID reported cases to be high compared to countries who don't test the dead bodies at all. In fact, many countries in the sub-region do not test the dead bodies for COVID. So, but Gambia, which is on so naturally that will mean that our chance of missing people who have died of COVID would be very low. Thank you. How soon will the yes, just as I mentioned, uh, the government has procured uh, 80 ambulances. Uh, we call them, we're going to use them as community ambulances. And uh, some of them will be at these ambulance stations that we mentioned. Because we have seen that in the Gambia, when accidents happen, it is the passers by who help. Anybody who is driving by sees an accident, they try to move people into that uh, vehicle. In the process of doing that, sometimes they worsen the injuries of the injured. In fact, sometimes we believe even leading to the death of those people. Because if a patient, uh, someone was involved in an accident and uh, develops incomplete injury of the spine, the movement of that person into another vehicle by people who do not know what to do can lead to that injury becoming complete injury of the spinal cord, and that could lead to the death or permanent disability of that individual. So that is why we are training people. So we are going to have these ambulance sites, and ambulances will be there 24-7, and we'll have paramedics there 24-7 who are going to swing into action 
when they receive a call from a unique number that's going to be done. The majority, as you mentioned, are going to be in the various constituencies and so on, so that they are able to do community services. We have realized that in the Gambia, what we found, and that is what is happening still, which we want to change, is that people struggle a whole lot to get to the health facilities, especially at night. We have hard stories. The last time we were in Perdago, the community bat companion was taking a pregnant woman to a health facility at night. They were on a donkey cart from the Kerardo to where they could, the woman could deliver. Unfortunately, along the way, wolves started to attack them. And they couldn't go. They had to go back to the village, and then the woman delivered at home. The other one was at Naoleru. We were there. A similar thing. This time, the pregnant woman was on a horse cart. Out of here, fear, the horse started to run at top speed with the pregnant woman on a horse cart. You can, just, you can only imagine that. This is sad. So we said, the president said, that something needs to be done about this. And now we are going to have community ambulances stationed in those communities so that when we have a pregnant woman who needs to deliver, they call that number, the ambulance goes to the house, picks her up to her health facility. I think that will be a game changer in the health system for the people of this country. So that is the essence. In fact, we are expecting the first batch of 20 in the next 10 days, inshallah, and another batch before, by the end of the month, September, and the first week of October, we are receiving. So by first week of October, inshallah, we will be getting 55 in country. That's the schedule of delivery. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes, th thank you very much, Nelson. Of course, uh, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the health sector is very complex and a whole lot of things. We talk about polio, we talk about COVID, we talk about a host of things. And it's a 24-hour service. And uh, so, so that's why sometimes certain things are not uh, mentioned uh, and they are not uh, deliberated on. But I myself need more briefing on that. So I will want to be briefed before I comment on that, the, the, the recent development, so that I can give you the facts. Yeah, thank you. But as far as I'm, I'm concerned, I've not heard of any active case in any individual for now, in a human being. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yes. So, so I'll get an update on that. I will keep you updated. Yes. The next one is uh, from Sankule Danko. Uh, there's another question. He said, uh, uh, can we specify uh, uh, political uh, parties? I didn't say any political party. I say politicians, that's what I said, are trying to infiltrate into the health sector and instigating people that we have information on that. And I don't think it is healthy. Health sector needs to function for the good of the entire people. We have seen those kind of things and we have seen those kind of lineages, and I will stop at that. Thank you. Of course, I don't think there's any need for a strike. Because uh, if the call for strike was the payment of the allowances, and the allowances are being paid, I don't think there's any need for strike. That's my answer to that. Well, I'm not sure the press release uh, uh, say, say, said all that, but what I know uh, is, you see, payments are in stages. If you send 
a voucher from Ministry of Health. Uh, you send it to, uh, uh, how to call it, Accountant General's Department. An Accountant General pays. It goes, it follows steps. It goes to the central bank. And then the central bank puts it. But at the end, uh, at the level of the Accountant General, it's paid. But sometimes it takes time. Sometimes salaries are paid and people don't get the alert in their accounts. But that doesn't mean it's not paid, but because the processes are on for people to actually get it into their accounts. But we can assure you that uh, before coming to this meeting, uh, we waited for confirmation. That's, that also took some time, so that we'll be able to tell you categorically that they've been sent to the accounts. So we are trying to verify that, and we got in that verification that it has been sent. Yes. Thank you. I said to health workers, including the nurses. That is the COVID allowances. They've already been paid, and people had received them. Health workers, I'm just trying to tell you government's commitment to remunerating and motivating health workers. Since the COVID-19 pandemic struck, government has paid over $110 million to healthcare workers as allowances. I think that is, good, 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 uh, that, that is something good. That's a good uh, initiative from this government. And that's no small money, we all know. And still more are being paid because uh, some uh, claim that uh, their names were left out and we are looking at those. So the figure will even go beyond the $110 million. Okay. I am quoting from what you said earlier that you're going to deal, deal with some of the um, workers or nurses that are not doing well. Yes. So what are going to, what is the step, uh, okay, for example, what steps will the ministry take in uh, dealing with those issues? Yes, so it is, not, it is not the nurses per se, it is any individual who is not doing his work. People must do their work. Mm -hmm. I listed a number of positions, number of people whose responsibility it is to make sure the patient's bed is clean, the walls in the hospital is clean, the walk, ward is clean, the fans are working, the air conditioners are working, the toilets are clean and functional. It is not the direct responsibility of the minister to clean a ward. There are people who are supposed to do that. So if you meet a ward that is dirty, that means some people are not doing their work. But of course, if they don't do their work, then it becomes my responsibility to make sure they do their work. I think that's correct, isn't it? They claim that they're not having funds from the ministry to help them with, you know, with those issues. Unfortunately, that's not correct. Mm -hmm. That's not true. If it is a hospital, hospitals have been getting funds, millions of dollars each month, mm -hmm. right? For example, if you look at a big hospital like Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital, I think their salary is now about 17 million. P, P, uh, 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 how many? 22 million. Total. So, 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 so Edward Francis, I'm being told, receives 22 million dollars from the hospital plus from the hospital on a monthly basis. And part of the how much is the OC now? The OC for them. Over $2 million. $2 million is, is all the charges. All the charges is for the maintenance of the hospital. Now, I'll also put a question to you. You know that hospitals generate income. They generate income. People pay. That's supposed to be used by the hospitals to make sure these things are available. Most cases, only 25% of that goes back to the drug revolving fund. 75% stays with the health facilities. So they have resources to be able to do what they had. But my sister, cleaning the ward, cleaning the floor, making the light work, making the fan work, how much resources does one need that? One only needs commitment of the people. And people must be committed to do their work. After all, people are paid salaries. And look at all the people I mentioned. And this is just the people who need to supervise. In fact, some of the wards have supervisors whose work is just to supervise. 
So is it for the minister to, to go and find out that a fan is not working, a toilet is not clean? How can we work like that? It is teamwork. Everybody needs to do his work. So basically, I think that is where the challenge is. Some people not doing their work because of reasons known to them. But you know, as a government, we cannot fold our arms and watch that situation to continue, right? So this is it. Okay. Now, when you even go to the facilities in the provinces that do not have subvention, you heard me just mention about the results-based financing. And some facilities get a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I told you 60% is for what? For, for the facility, to procure drugs and renovate the facility. 40% is shared among the staff as a bonus. I'm sure none of you knew this was available. But this has been in existence. So that 60% is so that when paracetamol is short, they go and buy. When plaster is short, they go and buy. Whatever is short, they go and buy. And also to train the facilities, to buy detergents, to buy omo, to buy bleach, to buy paint, to buy door locks, flush handles, to repair the ceilings. And those resources are there. So I think. It is a matter of people needing to do what they need to do, taking responsibility of what they have signed to do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, and uh, we just want to also thank uh, the Honorable Minister for that uh, detailed and uh, very comprehensive uh, update. Uh, I'm sure uh, the journalists, uh, you, will, uh, you are happy that uh, you have had uh, a lot of uh, new information uh, from the Ministry uh, this evening, and uh, we, uh, we believe you are going to disseminate this as uh, widely as possible for the consumption of the general public. Uh, on that note, we want to thank all of you for coming and uh, uh, we want to close this session. Penmore Physiotherapy and Rehabilitation Clinic is the first of its kind in the gun. We have inpatient service. and outpatient services. Penmore admits patients and they have intensive rehabilitation. That means treatment three times a day for five days from Mondays to Friday and on Fridays. They go to their families to spend time with them to have family. Our patients come on regular appointments probably twice or three times in a week for treatment. We treat patients with arthritis, with back pain, stroke patients, fractures or after fracture operations, paralysis of all types, and we do treat both young and old patients. And more physiotherapy gives quality physiotherapy treatments to Gambians because we are qualified physios from different parts of the world. If you want to receive monies from UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world, Supersonics Money Transfer has got you covered. With the largest payout network in the Gambia, you can now receive your monies anywhere you are from Kartong to Koina with less hassle. Yes! You can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world with our safe, secure, fast and convenient service that offers you the largest selection of payout locations in the Gambia. Supersonics Money Transfer. We are currently in 34 African countries and counting, giving you quality money remittance services that are second to none. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Supersonics.